From Orlando Furioso Translated by Sir John Harrington Of dams, of knights, of arms, of love's delight, of courtesies, of high attempts I spake. Then when the Moors transported all their might on Afric's says the force of France to break, incited by the youthful hate and spite of Agramont, their king, that vowed to wreak the death of King Traiano, lately slain upon the Roman Emperor Charlemagne. I will no less Orlando's acts declare, a tale in prose never see it sung or side, who fell bestraft with love. A hap most rare tone that erst was counted wise and stied. If me sweet saint that causeth me like care, me slender muse affords some grass your side. I mag no doubt, but I shall have the skill, as much as I have promised to fulfil. Bout sa, O prince of most renowned Midras, the ornament and hope of this our time, to accept this gift presented to your grass, be me, your servant, rudely here in the rain. And though I pamper pie and ink in place of deeper debt, ye tack it for no crime. It may suffice a poor and humble debtor to sigh, and if he cold, it should be better. Here shall you find among the worthy peers, whose prizes I prepare to tell in verse, Rogero, him from whom of ancient years your princely stems derived I rehearse. Whose noble mind be princely acts appears, Whose worthy fam even to the sky doth pierce. So you vouchsafe me lowly style and bass Among your high concerts, a little plas. Orlando, who long time had loved dear Angelica the fire, And for her sack about the world In nations far and near did high attempts perform and undertake, Returned with her, into the west that year that Charles's power against the Turks did mack, and with the force of Germany and France near Pyrenalps his standard did advance, to mack the kings of Africa and of Spain repent their rash attempts and foolish vaunts, own having brought from Africa in his train all able men to carry sword or lance, the other moved the Spaniards now again to overthrow the goodly reign of France, and hither, as he said, Orlando went, but of his coming straight he did repent. For here, behold how ill men judgments are, and how the wiser sort are oft mistaken. His laddie, whom he guarded, had so far, nor had in fights nor dangers great forsaken, without the dint of sword or open war, amid his friends a wife from him was taken. For Charles the Great, a valiant prince and wise, did this to quench a broil that did the raise. Between Orlando and Rinaldo, lad, there fell about Angelica some brawl, and each of them began the t'other hat. This lad is love, had madam both so thrall. But Charles, who much mislikes that such debat between such friends should raise on cause so small, to name a of Bavier in keeping gave her, and suffered neither of them both to have her. But promised he would presently bestow the damsel fire on him that in that fate the plainest proof should of his prowess show, and danger most the pagans with his mate. But either while the Christians tack the blow, their soldiers slain, their captains put to flight, the duke himself a prisoner there was taken, his tent was quite abandoned and forsaken. Where? When the damsel fire a whale had stied, that for the victor pointed was a pry, she took her horse, the farther time delied, but secretly conveyed herself a why, for she foresaw and was full sore afraid that this to Charles would prove a dismal die, and riding through a wood, she happed to meet a knight that came against her on his feet. His curate's on. His helmet not undone, his sword and target ready to the sam, and through the wood so swiftly did he run, as thy that go half naked for a gam. But never did a shepherd's dafter shun more speedily a snack that on her cam, than fire Angelica did tack her flight, when as she owns had knowledge of the knight. 
This valiant knight was Lord of Clarimount, Duke Amon's son, as you shall understand, who, having lost his horse of good account, that be mishap was slipped out of his hand, he followed him in hope again to mount until this lad his sight did make him stand, was fast and sharp, proportioned where so well, I seem the house where love itself did dwell. But she that shuns Rinaldo all she may upon her horse's neck doth lie the rein, through thick and thin she gallopeth away, ne max the choice of bait and why or plain, but gives her palfrey leave to choose the why, and being moved with fair and with disdain, no up, no down, she never laves to ride, till she arrived be a riverside. Fast be the stream, fair she sees anon, who annoyed in part with dust, in part with sweat, out of the battle hither came alone, with drink his thirst, with ire to swage his hate, and mending back again to have been gone, he was detained with an unlooked for let, into the stream behap his helmet fell, and how to get it out he cannot tell. And hearing now the noise and mournful cry of one with piteous voice demanding eyed, seeing the damsel ache approaching nigh that noft would help against Rinaldo pride, what weight it was, he guessed it by and by, the looking pal, like one that had been fried, and though she had not lacked been in his sight, he thought it was Angelica the bright. And being both a stout and courteous knight, and love a little kindling in his breast, he promised straight to hide her all he might, and to perform whatever she request. And though he want an helmet, yet to fight with bold Rinaldo he will do his best. And both o and the other straight to fight, oft having either other's value trade. Between them two, a combat fierce began, with strokes that might have pierced the hardest rocks. While they thus fight on foot and man to man, and given tag so hard and heavy knocks, away the damsel posteth all she can. Their pain and travel she requites with mocks. So hard she rode while they were at their fight, that she was clean escaped out of sight. When they, long time, contended had in vain, who should remain the master in the field, and that with force, with cunning, nor with pine, the tone of them could mack the to their yield, Rinaldo first did move the knight of spine, although he used such court as he put sealed, to mack a truce. Now was he to be blamed, for love his heart to other fate inflamed. You thought, said he, to hinder me alone, but you have hurt yourself as much or more. You see the fire Angelica is gone. So soon we lease that erst we sought so sore. Had you me tan or slain, your gain were known, so if you were ne'er the ne'er your love therefore. For where we two have mad this little sty, she lets us both alone, and goth her why. But if you love the laddie as you sigh, then let us both agree to find her out. To have her force will be our wisest why, and when of holding her there is no doubt, then be consent, let her remain his pry, that with his sword can prove himself most stout. I see not else after our long debate, how either of us can amend his stat. Ferrau, that felt small pleasure in the sight, agreed a sound unfriendly leg to mark. Thy lay aside all wrath and malice quite, and at the parting from the running lack, the pagan would not let the Christian knight to follow him on foot for money's sack, but prize him mount behind his horse's back, and so thy... St-